Thank you. From pregnancy and childbirth to periods and menopause, being a woman is never dull. Here in the UK, 51% of the population are women, and yet when it comes to women's health, technology has really lagged behind. Today I'm going to talk about my journey into femtech and why I believe this is a very special moment in history. Six years ago, before LV was even an idea, I was working at Mary Stopes International, which is the largest global private provider of sexual reproductive health services. I, I thought myself a bit of an expert in sexual reproductive health. I'd written a couple of books. I'd done my PhD here at uh, London School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine around HIV and teenage pregnancy. I'd worked on a wide range of issues through to access to contraception, male circumcision, and access to safe abortion. And then I got pregnant. And I realized there's just so many things around women's health I knew next to nothing about. It's just normal changes that we go through as women. You see, being a woman is a wonderful thing, but it's still not okay to talk about womanhood. In many different areas, taboo and stigma still prevail. It varies very much from place to place. The good news is that over time, we are seeing positive changes. So where is this taboo? Where, where can we not talk about womanhood? If we look here in Europe, I'd say 30 years ago, the breasts, breast cancer, that was a stigmatized area of women's health. It was difficult to talk about. Women were shamed to talk about. Now, today, sure, breast cancer is still a very serious health problem, but the attitudes have completely changed. It's okay to talk about these issues. They're out in the open. So in terms of taboo and women's health, I'd say it's very much below the belt. So we're talking about issues such as normal issues, uh, menstruation, vaginal atrophy, stressed urinary incontinence, endometriosis, pelvic floor hypertonicity, pelvic floor prolapse. These are all very common issues that women face, and yet they're often neglected. Quite a few of these are to do with the pelvic floor. For those of you who are not sure where this part of your body is, it's a very important muscle for women. It's a, it's a body of muscles like a hammock. It connects between your lower back muscles and your low abdominal muscles, and it's a core postural muscle. So it's key for coordination and control, and it helps hold up your reproductive organs. For me, I learned about it when I was 34. I was pregnant. It was not a health professional who told me, Tanya, you need to think about your pelvic floor. It was in a Pilates class, and my instructor said to me, Tanya, the most important thing you need to do as a woman is look after your pelvic floor. I literally didn't know anything about it. Like, I was like, what is this, this thing? And I went home, and my husband is French, and I said, gosh, you know, this pelvic floor thing. And he was like, mais oui, uh, la rééducation périnéale, which is uh, perineal re-education. And that's obviously, as we know, the UK and France are so different when it comes to women's health and gynecological support for women. And in France, as a natural part of all postnatal care, all women who've had a baby go through perineal re-education, focusing on the changes that they've gone through and helping them rehabilitate their body and their core strength. So being the kind of avid researcher that I am, I went and started you know, reading articles, talking to experts, and was frankly just completely shocked by the statistics. Half of all new mothers get pelvic organ prolapse, more than one in three women suffer from stress urinary incontinence, and there's a lifetime risk of an operation due to pelvic floor disorder of 11%. Um, going through the research, I realized really where the big gap was, was in terms of technology. So there'd been some Cochrane reviews, so those are the meta-analyses of the randomized control trials, and it showed that the, most, the technology with the most potential was biofeedback. So simple, real-time biofeedback, helping a woman with her proprioception, so that mind-body connection, so they could understand how to activate the pelvic floor and help guide them through that. The more I looked at it, the technology that was being used in hospitals was, to be frank, just decades out of date, had not kept up with other innovations happening in other fields. So it was relying on electromyography, which is picking up electrical current activity in the pelvic floor, which had very low interday reliability and validity. So in terms of what was kind of best in class, it was this. This is a pelvic floor dynamometer. So this is the most accurate and valid measurement of pelvic floor strength, which uh, relies on a strain gauge, so force sensor. And on the left, that's the Cochrane Review by Charles Glazner, who was one of our early advisors. So our design challenge was to take that and turn it into something that women wouldn't mind using, or even better, <laughs> maybe they'd like to use. Um, and this, you know, this product is, you know, it's, it's fairly extreme, but I do think, you know, when it comes to gynecological products, really they're not, I wouldn't say comfort and design are uh, front of mind when it comes to these designs. So yeah, so if I fast forward two years, 
this is LV. Um, so this is it here. You can see it doesn't look like a typical medical product. It's, it's rather elegant. It's very smooth. There's no half edges. It's all about comfort and putting the, the woman at the center of the design. In many ways, it's more sophisticated than what exists in the hospitals. So the way it works, this is a pod. You place it inside the vagina, about a centimeter above the introitus. The tail's on the outside, and it talks to your phone. There's two sensors inside. So the first is an accelerometer, which measures motion. So that allows um, LV to show women if they're exercising correctly. So 30% of women bear down instead of lifting up. So this way, we're able to use this as a tool to support women to exercise correctly. And it's very much integrated with the health service. So we try and correct women's technique. And if we find that they're not able to, to activate the pelvic floor correctly, we, we would recommend them to go and talk to a health professional. In addition, there's a force sensor, the posterior <coughs> anterior axis, so that as you squeeze, basically a gem on the screen lifts and goes down. And that provides that proprioception, the mind-body connection. Uh, obviously, we're very, as I mentioned, very scientifically based. Everything we've done is born out of, of what is best practice and good evidence and in line with the NICE guidelines. So we worked with clinical experts in terms of the workouts. But I think what we've done, which is kind of a bit different, is, as I said, it doesn't look like a typical medical device. And even the workouts and the games, we, we do much more in terms of psychology around what motivates people to exercise. How do we gamify it? How do we make it more fun? Because ultimately, what we're after is, is more behavior change. So, we launched. There were so many naysayers, so many people saying, mm, no, you're never going to get this into retail, you're never going to get people to talk about this publicly, go direct to consumer, forget the NHS, forget the health system, it's just it's too hard, it's too complicated. Um, we proved everybody wrong within two years. We have over a thousand health professionals that are recommending this product. We presented our research at international conferences. Um, and we've won an NHS supply agreement, right, which means that women can now be recommended this product at no cost by health professionals. But more importantly than just what we've managed to prove wrong in terms of health adaptation, is also just the kind of feedback like these quotes from women who, whose lives have been changed, women who never thought that they would be able to, to, to feel better about themselves, to no longer worry about incontinence issues and embarrassing uh, issues like that. So the success of LV is really because of a lot of hard work and passion uh, of individuals like Hannah Rose Thompson, who's here in the front row, who's our head of health. She's the one who's built this incredible health partnerships. She's also talking after lunch uh, in the other room. So if you want to hear more about Femtech, she'll be there. And, and, it, and it's not just Hannah, it's a whole team of people, a lot of them women, but men as well, who are all passionate about women's health technology and launching products which lots of people say aren't going to work, that are not going to have mass adoption. Um, but as well as the hard work, I would say it's also because this is a very special time in history. This is the time for Femtech. Because for big change to happen, like seismic change, the kind of unrivaled change that, that you can't go backwards from, you need the stars to align. And that's what's happening now. We have three big mega trends that are all coming together. The first one is very much the big feminist surge that we're all aware of. The Me Too movement is just one of those. But women are embracing womanhood. They're proud to be women. And taboos are being smashed. And change is happening at an incredible pace. The second that we're all aware of is the huge technological revolution that's touching upon all of our lives, but in particular around connected devices and the potential that these have to give much more better data, bigger data, instant data, all accessible on your phone for you to make better choices about your health and your body. And the third is the big paradigm shift that all of you are aware of as well in terms of health, where the traditional doctor-patient paradigm is no longer so relevant, and individuals are taking much more responsibility for their own health. So when you bring these three big trends together, I really think it's a huge potential for Femtech, um, and that the enormity of that change is not just to improve health outcomes, which it will do, but actually to, to fulfill the potential of technology to change the way women feel about their bodies and their womanhood, to embrace that uh, more than they ever have before. Um, in over two, so we've just launched LV two years ago. We had to hit different communities. For women, it was easier than we thought because genuinely they've been waiting for this kind of product. Uh, and, and better technology. The press has been very open. As I said, I think this huge feminist surge means that we can talk about things that we couldn't talk about before. 
the med tech sector, actually, the health sector has been embraced in a, in a much easier way than we thought of as well, I think, because there's acknowledgement amongst health professionals that pelvic floor health is a really important area of women's health. So even just three years ago, we we're at Wide Health, we we're at the startup stage when we just had a, a small prototype. Um, I'd say the tech community, it's taken longer, right? I, I, obviously, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm, a, I'm an optimist. But at the beginning, they were like, oh, that's just weird. You know, what is that startup doing that weird stuff? But it flips, you know, and that's why I'd say anybody who's thinking about women's health tech, like the change is happening at a very fast pace. You know, within two years now, suddenly we're like, you know, the government's top 30 upscale or Sunday Times top 15 or Europa's hardware's hottest startup, all this kind of stuff. And I think that's because it's become more of a non-brainer to investors that, that women's health is a big opportunity. So I'd say three years ago, this is a, a landscaping by kind of CB Insights around what's sort of happening, the explosion in Femitech. So just looking a bit more broadly, um, I'd say three years ago, it was kind of myself and Kate Ryder from Maven or Ida Tin from Clue, who were all kind of complaining that the tech sector wasn't taking Femitech seriously. But now that really has changed, there's been a big explosion in interest and funding. So if we look at the different kind of areas where this is sort of happening, in the top left are the fertility areas. So companies like Cellmatics, which has raised about $40 million, looking at better information and choice for women around fertility. Uh, Prelude, which is a big, uh, in terms of supporting egg freezing, has raised over $200 million. The middle quadrant around the sort of period of fertility tracking, such as Glow, they've raised recently $20 million. Um, Natural Cycles has raised $30 million. So a lot of money is going into women's health tech, which, which really wasn't available just a couple of years ago. On the tracking, it's, it's all about better information, better knowledge, so women can understand their bodies more and use that in an empowering way to make better health choices. Um, in the bottom left, I say period care goods. There's been a lot of advocacy and effort in this area, particularly in the US. Uh, there's not so much on the tech side, but it's much more about improving the form factor, um, thinking about the shape, making, you know, again, acknowledging that products which are designed for the vagina have just been completely uh, left behind when it comes to good design and any kind of innovation. Uh, the other sort of thing at the bottom, the general healthcare, this is kind of moving slightly away from the technology, but it's a really important issue for women's health as well. So companies like Maven, so recognizing in a more gendered way that health services need to provide specifically for women and specifically for women's health services, and similar to that, that we need to take more of a gendered lens when it comes to understanding disease and disease management. There's a lot happening, as you can see, uh, a lot happening below the belt. There's still a lot of areas I think that are in need of more attention. You know, menopause is a huge period of, important period of women's life that's been lacking in attention. I think there's a lot of interest, obviously, in fertility. I say through pregnancy and postnatal, there's been a lot less attention. Um, but overall, you know, it's a really exciting time because as the axis within health tilts to a more personalized health. And finally, women are getting the technology that they deserve and they've been asking for. Thank you.